I love this path. You know, the, the path is amazing. It's beautiful. It goes through, you know, some of the most beautiful parts of the British coastline. It's really unspoiled and wild and natural in places. It's got loads of history and heritage and it's been on the cards for a decade more. I used to come and run as a kid in Cornwall and think, this is beautiful. One day I'll do all of it. Day 15 of the long run home. And it's quite a big day because I've been a bit of a mess the last few days. More people have climbed Mount Everest than have run the Southwest Coast Path in three weeks. I think, you know, this is something like climbing Everest three times doing this. Once a week for three weeks. The days have all been amazing in different ways. You know, even the hard days have been great. But I think some of the weather, you know, the early days around Linton were great. I was dreading days four and five because there are almost 10,000 feet of climbing in each of those days, back to back. So what's your name? Helen. Why are you here today? Uh, I wanted to come and support Martin um, and, you know, just show him this beautiful place that we live in. I just want to point out, right, that Andy's making the run look really easy <laughs> with the buggy behind. This is a lovely, flat, good, wide surface. <laughs> it hasn't been like this the whole way. So a couple of days ago we did a... It was a 38 mile day. The pain at the end you know, it was, for me, like nine out of 10. It was pretty intense. <laughs> I got overtaken downhill, elderly lady motoring much quicker than I was. The guy I was with said, it's okay. You've just been done by Miss Marple. Pretty hard. That's why I needed a day off yesterday. Today it's, Started off quite easy, pain-wise. Progressively ramped back up to, you know, quite intense now. I wish I didn't have that, that attitude of tomorrow's another day, you know, it might be, it might be better tomorrow, that, that sort of relentless pursuit of possibility. Where there's a little chink of light, I'll always go for it. And that's hard when sometimes you should just stop. <laughs> it's hurting, as you can probably see, running downhill, it's not very comfortable at all. I kind of worked out that if I go side to side and take the pressure on the outside of the foot, it eases the pressure on this part of my quad. Effectively, I've got no eccentric braking, so I'm trying to slow myself down a big hill like this, and my leg just gives way, and that's, it's got very painful. And on big, big sort of downhills with big edges, it's not very safe. And I'm also not sure today whether I can, you know, safely make it through the rest of the week. So I'm using today as kind of a cut-off day. If I can survive today and get through it, then 
Now I'll try again tomorrow. And each day is a little bit like that now. You bastard. I think I put my foot down the hole. Just went over on this ankle. This ankle's been been swollen all week with a fat ankle, so it's quite fragile. And this quad, this quad bandaged up means it's quite weak. So I've got a dodgy weak, dodgy quad on one side, a dodgy ankle on the other side. Anything like a little rutted field, and before you know it, you're on the deck. So an already swollen foot. You know, rapidly. It's like when my children get ill. You know, your children get ill and they get one little illness and it can layer into another. And with this, like one injury where something's come along and it's thrown your balance, it's thrown, it's kind of thrown things. Then you get another one that layers on top of that and something else and that layers on top of that and something else and that layers on top of that. And it's those layers that make you go, man, this is really hard. So yeah, took a tumble. But I shall get back up. And um, yeah. Felt like I'm playing horsies with my daughter. You know? You know when they do that? <laughs> I'm trying to film a serious documentary here, you know? <laughs> G, G up! Come on! <laughs> G up, boy! Ay, ay, ay! about you know moments like this you know whether I make the path or not I'll remember the time that we hit this river and you know we had to walk through it my friend Tony sent me a picture and it was of two buttons you know like big red buttons one's labeled don't be a dick. The other's labelled <laughs> be a dick. And at the moment my hand is casually hovering between the two. <laughs> and I said, today would be the deciding day and I know what lies ahead and I know what condition I'm in and honestly all of it depends on the terrain if it was like this I'd do it no problem well it would hurt but I could do it it's the downhills so this is the appropriately Good named job. Hope Cove over there, there's a pub called the Hope and Anchor. It's about seven and a half hours of running in today and about 21 miles. We've still got eight miles to go to Silcombe. I've been resting this quad all day and I said to myself that if I got to the end of today, I'd make a decision whether or not the rest of the challenge was, was doable. And I, I've made the decision I can't get to the end of the day today. So that means that the, the rest of the challenge isn't doable either. So I think that's it. In, uh, there is no hope in hope. Pesky injuries, pesky quads, tens of thousands of steps, probably at least two Mount Everest run already. 
250 miles in the first week and one thing I want to give and is my best effort you know like I've given this my best effort and and that should be enough I, I tell my daughter that you know when it's so her report from school comes in that her best effort is enough, whatever, regardless. Her best effort is enough. And, and yeah, I've given it my best effort and my body's just, just broken down and I can't make each of the days, the, the stages, the requirements for each day and, and now out of reach. Um, you know, time is just ticking away and, and the opportunity to do it goes. So best effort, but yeah, I'm gutted. Go and get a pint. <laughs>